Welcome to this guide in which I will show you how to create a secure private network using NetBird. We'll connect a MacBook, set up a Docker container, and I will also show you how to remotely access an EC2 node that is running on AWS. So NetBird is a peer-to-peer -peer or overlay network that connects your machines directly to each other, and that without the need to open ports or configure firewalls. And to make this happen, you'll need to have the NetBird client application running on your machines. So let's begin by adding a device to our network, starting with this laptop. First, you head over to the NetBird website and click on Install. Next, you choose your operating system. As you can see, NetBird is widely compatible across a range of operating systems and can also run on serverless environments and Kubernetes clusters. And the key advantage with NetBird is the unified management which is possible in the admin panel. So regardless of the operating system you use, NetBird provides one unified platform to manage your entire network and all your devices that are connected to this network in one single place. So once the download is complete, follow the installation steps. It should only take a few seconds to get everything set up. After the installation, open the NetBird desktop UI you can find the NetBird icon in the system tray. From here, click on Connect, and that will redirect you to the login page where NetBird will ask you to log in using one of the supported identity providers. So NetBird supports SSO and MFA out of the box, and you can use social or a business account to sign up. If you use Okta, reach out to us via support at netbird.io because Okta requires some additional configuration. Today I'll use Google. Now you authorize NetBird to log in using Google. If you do have multi-factor authentication enabled with your identity provider, NetBird will automatically integrate it for added security. After authorization, it should have connected successfully. Head back over to the admin panel and you will see your machine or appear in network terms in the list. Let's call this one laptop. Okay, so that was easy, but there's nothing to connect to it yet. So let's add another peer to the network and we'll go with a Docker container. So NetBird works with Docker, allowing you to connect Kubernetes clusters and other container services like AWS ECS. To do that, you have to make sure that Docker is installed in your machine. Then you copy the provided command from the NetBird side and paste it into your terminal. In this command, you will see a parameter called setup key. So previously, when we added the first machine, we went through an interactive SSO login. However, when we're dealing with containers or servers, there's no one present to complete the SSO process. So NetBird provides setup keys as an alternative because these keys allow you to add machines to the network without going through the manual SSO login. I'll show you how it works. So again, setup keys are crucial for automating deployments and adding machines to your network at scale. A setup key is essentially a pre-authentication key that allows a new machine to join your network by associating it with your account on its first run. In the NetBird admin panel, go to Setup Keys and click on Create Setup Key. First, you give your key a name. I'll call this one Docker Demo. Then choose between a one-off or a reusable key. If you choose a reusable key, you can set usage limits. One-off keys can be used only once, while reusable keys can be used multiple times, as the name suggests. And you can also set an expiration for the setup key, but keep in mind that even if the key expires, machines that have been added with this key will not be affected. So when a key is revoked, all the machines that have been authenticated with it will remain connected to the network. You also have the option to enable ephemeral peers, which will automatically remove peers that have been offline for over 10 minutes. And this is especially useful for managing dynamic workloads such as Kubernetes clusters, which frequently start and stop containers, because it prevents inactive or orphaned containers from lingering in your system. And that just helps you to maintain a cleaner and more efficient network, especially in environments with auto-scaling. And lastly, you have the option to automatically assign new peers to specific groups, so every peer that will be added with this key will automatically join this group and the group's access control policies will be applied too. Okay, so here's our setup key. 
Next, you copy the setup key and you store it securely. And to start a NetBerry client with a setup key, you paste it into the command that you previously copied into the terminal. And then we head back to the peers view and the Docker container should be added. And there we go. I'll rename it to Docker container for the sake of overview. And save changes. Now we have two machines added to our network. And finally, let's connect and then remotely access a cloud instance by adding an EC2 node that is running on AWS. But first, since we're adding a few new peers and we want to keep an overview of what is coming in and joining the network, let's add another layer of security by enabling a review and approval process for new machines. This will keep track of incoming devices and ensure that only authorized ones can connect. To manage this, you go to the authentication section under settings, and here you can enable peer approval. This will require each new peer or each new machine to be approved by an administrator before joining the network. NetBird also integrates with CrowdStrike, and if you have this integration enabled, you can control that only corporate devices that are managed by their IT department and equipped with the CrowdStrike agent can join the network. And if you want only secure devices on your network, in CrowdStrike, you can define a ZDA score. ZDA stands for Zero Trust Assessment, and this score checks things like software updates, antivirus status, and configuration to make sure that each device is secure enough before it's allowed to join your network. The last peer we're going to add is an EC2 node. And this device is a Linux server that is running on AWS. So in the admin panel, you can see we've got two nodes set up in the network, a laptop and a Docker container. And to add the Linux machine, you click on Add Peer, and then you select Linux as the operating system. And you copy the first command that is provided here. And now you go back to the AWS console and open the terminal and you paste the provided command into that AWS terminal to install NetBird. And once the installation is finalized, you type in the command NetBird up. And we're going to work with a setup key since this is a server. And use a previously created setup key, copy it from the dashboard and paste it into the terminal. And there you go, our EC2 node is connected. So let's return to the admin panel and you will see that the demo server is now listed as one of the peers. But since we set up the approval process for new peers joining the network, before this demo server is allowed to join your network, you need to approve it. Now we have three peers added to the network, a laptop, a Docker container, and an EC2 node. And the last thing I want to show you is how to configure an exit node. So let's say you want the traffic from the Docker container to be routed through the demo server through the EC2 node. To do this, you click on Demo Server and down below click on Add Exit Node. Here you select a distribution group and any peer within the distribution group will have their traffic routed through this exit node. So previously when we added the Docker container to our network, we also added it to the group Docker Containers. So I will select that group to be our distribution group. Next, you give your exit node an identifier and then click on Add Exit Node. Now, if you go back to the peers view, you will see a little sign next to the demo server, which is indicating that this peer is now an exit node. And that means that the traffic from the configured distribution group, in our case, that is the Docker containers group, will be routed through this peer. Another important feature is setting up access control policies to manage network access. In NetBird, you have the option to define which peers and which peer groups can connect. You can specify protocols and ports, and you can also include posture checks for zero trust security. If you want to learn how to set up an access control policy, there is a video on that topic, which is linked below.